Okay, thanks for being here. Just to recap our the Arkansas State game, obviously really happy for our players. I was uh, those guys. Uh, you know, we worked extremely hard um, to get to a position where you go and get a big road win on, in conference, and uh, I really I was excited for those guys. It was a, locker room was a fun place for sure. Really proud of how we played as a team. I thought we uh, were very very solid as a team. Probably our most complete game all the way around uh, when you look at maybe since Middle Tennessee. So. I thought all three phases uh, complemented each other and did a lot of really good things. So excited, excited for that win. Obviously, anytime you win a, a road game in this conference, uh, especially uh, obviously Arkansas State's got a good program and, and always does a great job. So uh, I thought the key the key was really simple. We played really good football uh, defensively. We created turnovers again, which is always a plus. We limited the explosive plays uh, that you know from a defensive standpoint tackled well in space. Uh, and I thought we really contested every throw. And with those guys, the wide outs they have, I thought that was a big emphasis this week. Brandon Call, our defensive coordinator, made a, made a big point with our players that, you know, we need to be in position all the time and, and really understand that what they do is an offense and try to contest every throw. And I thought our guys, for the most part, did that. Uh, offensively, we had no turnovers, which was a huge emphasis this week. Uh, created explosive. We had very few negative plays, a couple sacks that I wish we had back. Uh, we should have gotten rid of the ball, and uh, but that's part of it. And uh, I think sometimes as a quarterback, you, sometimes you know when the play's over, and if you can't throw it away safely, then 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 you obviously don't want to turn it over and protect it. And I thought Jacob, for the most part, did a good job of that. Had two hands on the ball in the pocket, didn't get it knocked out a couple times. Special teams, I thought we handled the multiple looks that that they're known for. You know, in their punt coverage and their kickoff coverage. They, they can give you a lot of uh, funky looks, so to speak. And I uh, thought Brian Blackman and his staff did a great job from a special team standpoint of making sure that we under, we were where we were supposed to be and when we were supposed to be there. Uh, we made all our field goals and extra points and really executed the kickoff game well, too. If you notice, we did a lot of pop-up kickoffs and thought Jack did a great job of, of putting that in a, in a good spot and uh, really tried to limit their return opportunities. So overall, I thought it was a very complete game. I know our guys were excited. Uh, anytime you, you, you win a game on the road, like I said, and then have a long trip home, it makes that trip easier for our guys. So um, looking forward to getting started today. Our players of the game uh, this week, offensively, Jacob Free, 33 of 45, 419, two touchdowns, uh, no interceptions and a rushing touchdown. And I thought Jacob really executed well. And, you know, when a guy hasn't played in a while, and now, you know, last week he was kind of thrown into the fire pretty quick. Uh, didn't have a lot of time to think about it. Now you got a week where it looks like, uh, you know, depending on how Gunner feels and so forth, that he's going to be the starter. And he had to prepare that way. And I uh, thought he did a great job preparing. Uh, I, th I think our staff did a great job of narrowing things down that fit him, that he liked, that fit also against Arkansas State. And then he went out and executed. And uh, I think that says a lot about his preparation. So really proud of Jacob and, and how he handled this situation. This week, defensively, we really had two player of the games. Will Cholo, he had four tackles and one being a TFL and in a big block field goal. So anytime you do that, that's a huge deal. You know that that tells you a lot about Will because and uh, anyone because the field goals a lot of times in extra points. D linemen and defensive players can just kind of relax and take a play off if they want. But we we try to emphasize that we want them to get good push and try to get hands up and. Great job of him by executing that. Terrence Dunlap also four tackles, three pass breakups against um, one or two of the better receivers in our league. Um, I thought he contested everything and really played uh, physical out there at corner. So excited to see that. Really proud of Will and Terrence. Scout team players of the week defensively, Terry Thomas. I uh, thought he was excellent. Um, I thought he did a great job. Uh, you know, the scout team kind of goes unnoticed a lot of times because those guys. Uh, they, they're supposed to prepare you for what you're going to see. And I thought Terry did a great job along with the entire scout defense. Offensively, Rondell Cole, the rece a receiver for us, did a great job uh, simulating number nine, the Adams kid, and trying to uh, make our defense understand where he was. And then special teams, Robert Marsh, uh, he was excellent as well. So really, really excited and proud of those guys. Oh, I forgot to mention our special teams player of the game uh, which was uh, Sean Sprawling, who – who really played in all on all phases of the special team and uh, had two or three tackles and just uh, really liked the progress he's making. He's really bought into his role in special teams and and really taking it to another level. So, you know, those are our guys. All in all, a, a really good team effort and uh, really proud of how we how we handled the road trip and, and got a big win on the road. 
Uh, you know, Georgia Southern preview, obviously Chad Lunsford, their head coach, and I go way back. Really good guy. I like him a lot. He's He and I have known each other for a long time, worked together at Auburn. He is a um, he is a really good football coach. Uh, he's If you look at what he's done there at Georgia Southern when he took over and really uh, – taken that team and made that team in his image now. Obviously, um, he's, they're always going to be very solid in special teams, and that's Chad's influence. But but offensively, very difficult to defend. You know, obviously, they're a triple option uh, football team. They make you play good discipline football every snap. Uh, very good at what they do. And, and really, the quarterback, uh, Wirtz, really makes them go. He's a very, very good football player. And obviously, now he's played in this system, I, I'm guessing, probably three years. and and looks very, very comfortable uh, making the decisions he has to make as, a, as an option quarterback. O-line, very, very solid, really good at their technique and what they do. They understand the, how to block the different fronts um, and react to that. And, and anytime you run the triple option, that's a key. The running backs are very, very good. Big physical guys. Uh, obviously, at times they'll cut you down, but, but when they hand on the ball, those guys are very physical and explosive. So we're going to have to make sure we try to get them you know, stop before they get going and not let them get downhill. Then they'll suck you in with play action and throw it over your head. And really tough to simulate and prepare for. And I think that's going to be the key is our scout teams are going to have to do a great job this week of simulating what they do and uh, to the best we can. And, you know, I think it's going to come down to playing good, solid, disciplined football. And if we'll do that, I think we'll be in a good spot. But uh, they're going to make you – they're going to really check you in every phase. So we're going to have to do a great job. Defensively, big and physical. I mean, their linebackers and safeties are – some of the most impressive looking guys in our league. Uh, very uh, very aggressive, uh, tackle well, uh, very physical. They move the front a lot, give you a lot of different looks and play extremely hard, which is very typical of a, of a Georgia Southern football team. So big challenge ahead for us. Um, a little different style of defense than we saw last week. So we're going to have to get, a, obviously, a, a good look from our scout team on defense as well. Special teams, I mean, they blocked a couple punts and a field goal. Very aggressive unit. Um, you know they they they're gonna they're gonna make you defend them. They're gonna make you block them. You know fourth down's not just gonna be if you're punting where everybody just kind of relaxes. We're gonna have to make sure we understand where they're lined up and where they're coming from. And big thing on that I think is gonna be communication. We got to communicate exactly what we're doing and who's got what. But uh, really good on kickoff coverage as well. That sticks out to me. Not many good returns on these guys. Very well coached. Very solid. Uh, typical Georgia Southern team. Um, Another big challenge on the road this week, um, and uh, you know we need a, a great a great week of prep and uh, really kind of the same approach we had last week. I mean, good football is going to win. We got to limit our turnovers and not have any if we can, and then obviously create some on defense and uh, really be the most excited team to play. They're going to have some fans there, I'm sure. Uh, it's what you see on film. I'm not sure what their capacity will be and so forth, but uh, we're going to have to bring the energy. It's an early game for us, which we like that. So. Hopefully we'll have a great week of practice and uh, and go down there and uh, play really good football. Okay, questions. Hey, Chip, can you update us on the status of Gunner now that Jacob's playing so well? How do you mm -hmm. approach this? Is, is he good? Is he ready to play? Yeah, I mean we're hopeful. Uh, again, we we don't really know yet. It's going to see kind of a day to day thing, you know, and see how it goes. Obviously, Jacob has played well for two weeks, uh, so we're we're excited that we got two guys we know can play. Um, and you know, if we're whenever we have to make that decision, uh, we'll figure out what kind of what's best for our team. But uh, until we know more about Gunner right now, obviously Jacobs Jacobs played well enough to be our our starter this week. And if Gunner's available, then uh, we'll adjust from there. Coach, now that you're kind of halfway through this season, I know we've talked a lot about the coronavirus to begin mm -hmm. with, but I just kind of wanted to get your perspective halfway through how that has been going and how the team has adjusted. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's it's still scary every week. You just don't really know all the time who you got, a, you know, available or not available. It can even go up to right to the day of before or the day of a game. So there's always some uneasiness as we start testing each week. but. I really, uh, our medical team, our medical staff and administration, we've got great, great plans in place for all the different um, things that might pop up. A guy, you know, may test positive early in the week, a guy the day before, how do we handle that? We're, we're on the road, what do we do? You know, all those diff difficult things that you have to think about. 
Um, and it's, it's gone very well for us. We're very fortunate. So far, we've been in a great position. Very, very few uh, positives when you look at, you know, our team and how many kids are on our team. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we can't let up. It's, it's, a, it's something I think is here for obviously this season and for sure. And, uh, you know, we have to remind our guys all the time to take the precautions and guidelines that we talk about, you know, with wearing a mask and limiting your exposure and so forth. But um, I think it's a different world. It makes it tough uh, preparation-wise. Football coaches are really kind of guy, uh, creatures of habit and like to do things in a certain order each week. Uh, and know and be able to plan, and, and that's not always uh, possible. But at the same time, it is what it is, and we'll adjust and and uh, try to have the best plan we can each and every week. And then, uh, if we're missing a few guys here or there, we'll have to we'll have to deal with it. Uh, uh, last week, coach, we talked about the maturity of your team bouncing mm -hmm. back after a loss. Obviously, you mentioned how big it was to go out on the road and do it. Mm -hmm. But talk about you know the maturity again of bouncing back um, after last week. Yeah, I, I really thought it says a lot about our team. And it, and it didn't really surprise me because I, I got a lot of confidence in the leadership on our team. And, we, you know, we had, last year we played a lot of young, inexperienced guys. And the one thing we have now are some guys that have played some snaps, um, especially on defense, where we were very, very inexperienced. And offensively, obviously, our skill guys are all pretty experienced guys. But we got a few growing pains still going on up front with some, uh, you know, three guys that have limited experience. but. I just was really pleased with the way our team responded. We understood after watching the film last week that, that you know, we really shot ourselves in the foot a lot, and, and uh, that was our goal this week. Let's play good, solid football, and that was a focus. Um, I heard our team talk about it, and uh, then we went out and did that. So very pleased with how he did that, and I think it says a lot about, like I said, the leadership on our team and the direction that we're headed. Coach, uh you know, everybody going into the season, everybody was excited about Carlton Marshall and Ryan mm -hmm. So, but talk about the play of uh, McDonald. Obviously, led the team in tackles again on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, where's he progressed, and just how you know how impactful has he been? Well, Jaden is a guy that immediately, you know, he sat out here last year because he transferred in. Uh, see him and Richard Jubinar as well. So, you know, both those guys have been impact players for us. And I think what I've seen from Jaden is just a maturity. I mean, he's. He's grown up on and off the field. He's handled his business more like a pro. Uh, physically, talent-wise, I mean, we never questioned that with him at all. It was, you know, some some growing pains that he probably needed to grow grow through, and he has. To his credit, uh, he's been very uh, honest with himself and, and understanding the coaches have been honest with him about here's what the things you need to improve on. Uh, he's still learning, obviously, still being a young player, but he's an extremely talented guy that – really has a bright future here and, and maybe probably even past here. So we're excited about him. Uh, I think he would tell you there's a lot of things he, sh he can obviously clean up, but he plays, he plays fast, he plays physical, uh, he likes to play, he loves football, he practices every day. So, so those are some things that I think are, are really good qualities of, with him. And hopefully he'll continue to grow up and mature. And, and uh, I think playing next to a guy like Carlton Marshall and K.J. Robertson, uh, has uh, those two guys have been a really good impact on on Jaden, and uh, I think he would admit that as well. After last week's game, speaking of Carlton, one of mm -hmm. the things he said when he was talking to the media was that this team has a different feel. It has something mm -hmm. that last year's team doesn't have. So I was just wondering if you could maybe speak on that and something maybe that this team has that last year's team maybe didn't have. Well, I think. Um, you know, nothing, nothing against last year's team. Uh, they were they're good kids as well. I th I just think for me, it feels like this team's uh, closer, very close, very. Uh, um, you know, they all seem like they have fun playing together and practicing together. We don't have near as many guys now that 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 are maybe you feel like you've been here a year and a half and you feel like more they're your team. You know, from the head coach's standpoint, it just it just feels like it fits better. Um, Obviously, uh, you know, each week we have to continue to work and play better. But when you look at our team and watch them interact with each other, they seem uh, like a close-knit group. And I think, you know, the one thing about football, it's, it's, it's the best team sport, in my opinion, that there is because you rely on 11 different people every snap. And to do that and to play good football, you have to, you know, be united. You have to love each other and want to be – want to help each other out, play for the man next to you and all those – old cliches that are really true. Um, so I think that's what I've seen is this team's just uh, very close-knit and uh, like playing together and practicing together. And uh, 
hopefully that's going to continue to grow and pay off as we move through the season. Well, Chip, I want to ask you about the Sun Belt in general. Mm -hmm. uh, with Coastal in 15, Outstate's been ranked this year, Lafayette's been ranked. Mm -hmm. Just the competitiveness of this conference right now. Yeah, very. I'm very impressed with this league. I mean, I've said this all along. It's it's the top G5 league in my opinion. And you know, the thing I think you see around the league are, are really good coaches who do a great job in recruiting and get good players there. Uh, and also, I think you see a commitment from the universities in this conference to providing facilities and resources and things like that to to try to make it uh, even better than it was before. I, I mentioned earlier, I was in this league, I guess, ten years ago now. And uh, it was a different league and nothing wrong with it then from the standpoint, great people and all that. But it's just uh, the level has been raised for sure in our conference each and every week. Um, you know, anybody can beat anybody. And uh, I think you're seeing that firsthand and, and uh, a lot of good football teams in this league. Coach, just to piggyback off of that, how important has the exposure been to early in the season, Sunbelt being you know nationally televised? A lot of people mm -hmm. didn't see the Sunbelt for the first time. How, how big of a factor was that? I think it's big. I think it's uh, when you talk about you know you know on the national stage and getting the opportunity to play in bowl games and all the things that go along with it. I think it's always good to to get that exposure. And if you you know these schools, I think when they're on TV and and you know for instance here at Troy, when we get to the, that opportunity. It's a great opportunity for us to also showcase our university, not just from the football standpoint, but the academic opportunities, the things that go along with that. The, I mean, we got, in my opinion, we got the most beautiful campus, um, you know, in this state, and uh, I think that's a, our chancellor has been committed to that for years. He's been here for a long time, and you know, put a lot into this university. And I think a lot of people uh, learn more about you know Troy for sure, and some of these other places that maybe. They don't get that opportunity to if we're not on that national stage. So I think we've taken full advantage of that, and I think you see that around our league and you see that around the country. And, um, again, I think people are just kind of getting their eyes open to to what a good football league this can, this is. KJ, something that Coach Lindsey talked about at the beginning of the season was making sure that the defense was stepping up and improving from last year. So just – after this last performance on Saturday, how would you rank this defense about halfway through the season? Um, I feel like compared to last year, for sure, we're 100 times better. I mean, that's, that's you know, you can see that just by the first drive we had. Um, but we're not fully developed yet, really, to be honest. Um, we have so much more we can get better at. Um, there's a lot of guys who are playing, you know, to their potential, and we got to bring some more guys along. Um, and that's really it. I mean, we, we just got to keep getting better. We're not the best we can be. We left a couple of plays out there um, the other day, but it's 10 times better than what it was last year. I'll ask you about the uh, videos that y'all are being made to. The media department has been awesome, in my opinion. I love getting to see those videos each week, but as a player, when you see that kind of content going out and you're involved in it, what does that kind of do for the team, especially before a game? Uh, it's really cool. It's really hype. Some of the guys, they, they, uh, uh, you know, they sort of pick fun at me or not, but they, they like, oh my God, it's the model KJ. But I mean, it's it's really cool though. We we love watching it. G and Adam and everybody who's involved with uh, Big Ian, anybody who's involved with the videos, they do an amazing job. Um, they get us pumped. It, last week's video was amazing. And then, you know, like week one, I was lit on fire. So, I mean, that was pretty cool too. But, uh, I mean, it, everybody loves those. And it's just, it just gets us extra amped for the games coming up. You guys just got them playing against the top ranked receiving core in the Sun Belt. Now you're going against a triple option defense. Um, you know, obviously night and day completely different. How are you guys preparing for, you know, uh, just, just preparing for that offense? Um, it's just really it's just being disciplined. Um, a triple offense is very tough to go against. You know, they want to hold the ball. You know, limit our offensive drives. So. Uh, we we have to play sound defensive football. We have to know our keys. We have to know what our jobs, and we have to execute the right way. Because um, if we don't, uh, we're putting the game in their hands, and that's what they love to do. So uh, early down stops, 
you know, get them in third and longs as much as possible and just get off the field in third down. So it's just executing at a high level. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it is definitely more of a brotherhood, um, especially like us linebacker core guys. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're practically all brothers. Uh, even off the field, you know, we still have our bubble within ourselves off the field and on the field. Um, and, and you could see it like when we play um, on the defensive side of the ball for sure is like we have fun out there together, you know. Anybody makes a play, you know. There's ten guys around him that's, you know, amping him up. So I mean, and this it's the whole team as well. Um, even in the weight room today, we were getting amped up with everybody, because we we love being around each other. We love the grind and we love just having fun out there together. So it's for sure um, the team chemistry and everything and the brotherhood is way better than it was last year. Something that we've been talking with uh, both Chip and KJ about is just the chemistry that this team has, and it shows when you guys are taking the field. So as an offensive lineman, just talk, kind of talk about the chemistry that this team has and really the, the offensive line that is developing um, throughout the season. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different feel from what we had last year. Uh, us as an offensive line, we're, uh, we're really close. We're really tight. We spent all five of us spent most of the summer together and um, we do a lot of things outside of football together. So we're a really close knit group and uh, we really enjoy playing next to each other and gives us a lot of confidence playing with each other too. maybe that you learned from Saturday's game or even previous games that you are kind of hoping to tighten up against a Georgia Southern team. Coach talked very highly about their triple option. So what are some ways y'all are getting prepared? Yeah, Georgia Southern, they're a, they're a really good team. And their plan on offense is to hold the ball and keep our offense off the field. So what we take from that is our mistakes are going to be magnified. So. We're going to have to cut down on our mistakes and play a lot like we did in the first half of the Arkansas State game this past weekend. And uh, that's it, just cut down on the mistakes. Quick start on Saturday, the two quick touchdowns, first drive, third drive. How important was that from an offensive standpoint with Jake at the quarterback and everything that was going on for y'all to get off that quick start on yeah, getting started quick is uh, really important, especially for a guy like Jacob who, you know, he, I think Chip said his last start was two years ago and it uh, it really gave the entire offense a boost of confidence that, uh, you know, Jacob can do it and he started, uh, he started playing really well and the offense didn't really miss a beat. So starting fast and we need to do that again this weekend too. Um, well, Jacob and Gunner, I mean, they're roommates. There's, there's not much difference between the two. They both communicate the same, and um, it's the same calls, the same plays that we run. And um, they're really close, so there's not much of a difference at all between the two. And in general, y'all as an offensive line, you know, there were some question marks coming into the season. It seems like y'all are developing and getting better and better each week. Can you talk about the development of the of the line in general as a whole? Yeah, that's uh, that's thanks to Coach Pugh and the uh, the work ethic of the guys we have. Um, guys go out there every day at practice and they want to get better. And Coach Pugh's hard on us and. He really cares about us. He wants us to play our best. And um, we all want to get better. So we just keep getting better and better. We haven't played our best game yet, but 
we're searching for it. So two weeks in a row, you got to a kick and blocked it. Uh, what's the secret there for you? Um, honestly, I just got to give the credit to Coach Blackman and Coach Ward. They just they just told me how to play the technique right. And uh, these last two games, I've been grateful with the oppor opportunity to get my hand on one. So I hope it continues, and I hope we get another one this week. Uh, against Arkansas State, y'all really shut down a really good offense. And, and now going into Georgia Southern, you got a completely different type of offense, one that really likes to run the football. First, talk about what y'all did well against Arkansas State, and then the challenge of, of with you being a lineman stopping a really good running attack. Um, I just say we play good team defense and good complementary. Uh, just good. We just complemented well with the offense, so we just look forward to doing that again this week. I know Georgia Southern is a triple uh, triple option team. You got to be very di disciplined to stop that, but I trust my guys to get it done. Is it as a lineman, or is that more fun for you to go against a team like that that likes to run the football as far as a challenge? Oh, yeah. You hear a lot about how people are excited to get sacks and all types of those type of things, but sometimes it's just – it's always a great op it's always a great time just to get your hands dirty and play the run and see who just who just see who's more physical and who's tougher uh, talking with all the players about is just the chemistry that this team has. So I just wanted to get your opinion on um, how the chemistry has been and how you guys, I guess, are continuing to grow that chemistry. Oh, yeah. We're a tight-knit we're a tight -knit group. We love each other. Uh, like, I'm going to speak from my position, especially, like, the, the D-line. We're all tight. We all hang out. We're, all, we're just boys. And you play, you play harder for each other. You play tougher for each other when you have that camaraderie. And um, we gonna just hope to keep on doing that. I think you're muted. Yeah. Yeah, I have to mute myself again. <laughs> but something um, we talked about with KJ Robinson was the hype videos that Troy keeps putting out. This last one, the Halloween edition, getting a lot of attention. So. Um, just from your perspective, how does that kind of get you hyped up, knowing that people from not from this area are getting to see what Troy football is all about? Uh, first, you got to give cre credit to my boy Gino. He's he's the best in the business. Uh, we love every time he puts anything out, and um, yeah, those videos get us really really hyped up. Uh, and definitely, like we're a great program over here in Troy, Alabama, and it's just it's great for the world to get to see that, and uh, we're just thankful.